So I spent yesterday kind of fooling around out here getting uh, the convertible top frame ready for new seals. I actually ordered seals before I left town and uh, sorry, ordered uh, the pieces I need. I need the insert bars for these seals. Uh, I can show you what those are. Hang on. Here we go. Got the seal here. You can see a little aluminum bar that goes down the middle of it with some countersunk holes and all that. Um, you know, these guys go on here like this. And, uh, you know, you line up the holes, you screw everything down, and away you go. So this is the old seal. I have new seals. Just uh, needed the insert bars. I thought I was going to be able to use these old guys. But uh, as you can see, this one's in two pieces, which tells me, you know, they swap these out at some point and cut one off. That part's broken, blah, 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 blah. So these are what I was talking about a couple weeks ago, saying just going to order them rather than make them. So anyway, uh, I spent yesterday uh, with a bunch of stainless screws, screwing them into the holes, making sure the holes were opened up, and uh, breaking off lots of screws, which was not good. But uh, up here, uh, I had to drill one out that I couldn't get out. It broke off below the surface. And uh, on the other side here, uh, same location there up at the very top, I actually had one break off, tried to drill it out, and did drill it out, and then I had to tap the hole, and then the tap broke off in the hole. So uh, we've got a mess up here. I don't exactly know what I'm going to do. I'm not in a position where I really want to weld on, on this. There's too much in place and too, too nervous about welding up there. I was thinking, you know, I mean, the normal repair would be you weld this closed, you take a drill and you drill a brand new hole, and then uh, put the screw in there and tap it. So, <clears throat> don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet up there. Uh, one thought was, you know, fill it up with epoxy, and then, uh, you know, try and tap the epoxy and hope that that holds the screw. I mean, this, is, this doesn't get a tremendous amount of pressure, it's just holding a seal. So, uh, I may may wind up going that route if anybody has any, any ideas uh, just holler and let me know outside of that uh, I've still got some holes here that I gotta make sure they're all cleaned out I'm actually gonna use there's two different screws here the old screw is up here the new screw is down here the one on the bottom there the new one is stainless and I think the originals were stainless but I could be I could be wrong about that um, there's a little rust on them, but I think the rust is actually from the convertible top frame, not the actual screw. But the one on the bottom is a number six uh, stainless screw, and the one on the top is a metric something or other. They're very similar. The number six is just a tick bigger. That's why I'm putting them all into the holes. So we're going to use uh, the old size on some of these and the new size on others. So I'm going to try and make something consistent but uh, the bottom line is you know these number sixes make the holes bigger which is why they break off so it's a lot of work to uh, get them ready for the number sixes. This is a great example of what Volkswagen did at the factory. This is a an original seal with no modification so uh, you know the replacement seal looks very 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 similar to that um, you know obviously this one's cut on the bias there so it looks like it's a little chunkier but the dimensions work out about the same this other guy here when I held it up it's like wow this thing's this thing's bigger than uh, the replacement you know you look at it let's see if we can get a good look you look at it this way you know it's taller and it's like what in the world is going on here well they actually put a little rubber shim underneath of it because something didn't fit right. So this is what they did at the factory if something didn't line up right uh, they'd take it back apart and they'd put rubber shims under it to make sure that it was going to work properly. So the question is you know did they do that because the window wasn't adjusted right or what but uh, anyway we'll, we will go through that exercise and figure out if we need to reuse that rubber shim under there uh, apparently they put these the, these were very commonplace uh, on the convertibles. On the original seals, this little web right here is split so that uh, so you can get the screws. And of course, I can't reach 
my seals. Oh, here we go. Yep, here's one. Uh, it's split so that you can get to the screws. When they come from the folks who make the repops here, uh, that is not split. Hopefully you can see that. So we got to cut that. Um, the first thing I like to do is heat it up with the old uh, heat gun there. And we're just going to do this for a minute. Okay, then if you take a drill bit, uh, you can kind of stuff that in here and just, uh, just helps you keep it opened up. Then on the razor blade, if you tape the back half of your razor blade, otherwise you risk cutting this part up here. So, you know, when you're dragging your razor along, you don't want it to cut up here. So, uh, hopefully you guys can see that. My hands aren't completely in the way. Um, but that just allows that bottom portion to cut like that. And uh, we'll just move this sucker down as we go. And uh, hopefully come out with a nice, even, smooth cut all the way down. We are looking at uh, <clears throat> the passenger side here and we've got the old seal in place so you can see the top of the metal insert is kind of chamfered there. It matches the chamfer of the windshield pillar and I've just got everything lined up with the old holes and screws. I don't know if you guys can see that but the screws are kind of poking out there so we line them up with the holes. We've got a little gap down at the bottom. I think when I do the new seal I'm going to I'm going to get that as tight as I can. I buy razor blades by the hundred. Um, that way, if you have to make one cut with it and throw it away, it's not terribly expensive. But uh, there's a brand new one for us here. When we cut these pieces, we're going to make one cut, and that's uh, this razor will go into the pile of, of used razors that are still good, but we're not going to use it for two cuts on the rubber. So, uh, you know, in order to cut these, we'll, we'll use four four razor blades for two pieces of rubber. This is where it gets confusing because uh, this seal here when you cut it it actually it doesn't stand straight like this it's canted in and the cut needs to follow the top of the door so it's going to be an angled cut in two different directions so what I did was put a piece of tape here that uh, lines up with the top of the door so it's let's call it level with the top of the door <clears throat> then I can set this piece in here and I'm just putting like the corner right on the corner there then you can see on the inside here um, I don't know if you can see my pencil marks but I marked it where it hits the tape so that gives us the angle across the back here so from kinda high on that side to right at the corner there so that gives us that angle then uh, when you shut the door, you can set this down here and just make a parallel mark with the top of the door and that gives us this side. So we got the back and this side and then you just sort of connect the dots around and what I'll do is I'll put a you know tape around there uh, to mark it and then we'll cut at the tape line. We're going to look first at the tape there and then we'll come around this edge and it looks like we're hitting right on our mark. Was my hand in the way? Come on, Greg. We're right on the mark there. Then if you come out here and you kind of get, uh, you know, right on the ball there, we're, our gap's good, so that means that line is good. So we just have to make one cut that gets all three of these lines in there, and we should be good. Okay, we're real close. Now we're just going to see if we can make it even better. We've got it situated here and uh, you know as we come down it makes a nice gap. Uh, it also looks like we're sitting both square on the inside square on the outside so I am pretty darn happy with that cut that worked out very well I may come in you can see 
the bottom of that. Let's see if we can get a. There we go. Just a little chewy there. I may hit it with a, a grinder real quick. Just touch it. Boom. And uh, be done with it. This probably seems like uh, too much detail here, but what I did was take the insert bar out of the original uh, seal and I taped it right at the holes in three locations, one, two, three. Then I held our new seal up right where it's going to go and then I marked it along the edge on the outside and then I marked it along the edge on the inside and then I drew lines. I don't know if you can see that. One, two, three. There's a third one at the bottom there. I drew three lines so that I can put those bars in here where they belong and make sure that they're all lined up right because uh, you know how that goes. You, you want everything right. if you use a heat gun on a painted car because it can bubble the paint so I just constantly run my hand right there to make sure we're not going to peel that paint say good cheese hold on try it again ready See, Try it again. Long. Ready? You Good can't cheese. play one, two, three. Shut up! Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Don't let your man roll.